the college basketball experience Atlantic 10 2023 24 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Game Time. Snag the tickets without the stress. Use the promo code CFBX on your first purchase to save $20. Once you can download the Game Time app, use that promo code CFBX to save $20. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play the underdog pick them in college or NFL. Win up to 20 times the amount of money you can enter in one game. Plus, every single Sunday, they're giving away $100,000. Yes. Uh, use that promo code SGPN and Underdog Fantasy for 100% deposit bonus up to $500. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, 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 welcome, welcome to the college basketball experience, Atlantic 10 season preview, you know I love the A-10, if you know Pick Dundee, well, I'm sorry, I guess I'm supposed to introduce myself, uh, <laughs> look, my name is Colby Swiggin, Dan Base Dan, a.k.a. Pick Dundee, that's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. Everybody knows nothing. Somebody knows. Double the price. But no one touches Dundee. Yes, as I was saying... Me and the A-10 go back. Love this conference. I remember when fucking Virginia Tech was in this conference. That's how that's how old school I am. What does what does Prime say? Not an old, not old. I'm old school, not an old fool. See, I'm the opposite. All right, I'm an old fool, not old school. All right, I'm fucking around. I don't know. What you're, I don't know what we're talking about, but I love this conference. All right, VCU, Final Four team. George Mason, Final Four team. I remember Yinka Dare back in the day with G-Dub. The Dayton Flyers perhaps would have won a national championship. Had uh, had some Wuhan flu, not just took, you know, took it over the world, essentially. You got, you got a lot of great programs. Loyola Chicago, Final Four. What? They won the two? Did they go to two Sweet 16s? They might have. I am joined. He's freshly back from. Las Vegas, Nevada, where uh, I'm sure he, I'm sure, you know, he might have knocked down a few beverages or two. <laughs> uh, you, he is the host of the Big 12 experience, which you should be subscribed to if you want to know anything about the best conference in college basketball, I believe. Uh, but also, he hosts the Ryan and Russ show. And uh, yeah, like I said, he's freshly back. From Las Vegas, I give you Ryan McIntyre, a.k.a. Moneyline. Mac, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, you know, just trying to get my liver to uh, recover just a little bit. Hey, quick history lesson. The Mountaineers were once members of the proud A-10 conference, too. So, West Virginia historians out there, we love the A-10. I love the A-10. You mentioned a lot of good coaches. Kind of a little bit of an unknown coming into this year with a lot of these teams. Talking pre-episode with the Portal, NIL. I guess it's a common theme here, but yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into this league. This rich history. Yeah, and like that's one of the things like when I was growing up in the D.C. area, it was like you always watched the, a the ACC back then was the best conference. All right. Yes. NC, Nick, NC Nick still believes it, but it's not. But it, <laughs> but it was in that rear view mirror. It was. <laughs> Fucking every night, gigantic games. But you also had the A10 that you know regionally. Run once again, showing my age. You would get the regional games. So if you wanted to watch like UCLA Arizona, you're fucked. That's not yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back in the early nineties, <laughs> yeah, it was like no. So you had to you had to find the beauty in, in the the local TV guide. You say okay, well shit, the A10 is way better than what people realize. 
and you would go watch those A-10 battles. You would watch the ACC and uh, and the, the Big East, of course, because Georgetown was in the Big East. But it was, it was nice. It was nice growing up at that time. Now you got everything. And uh, this guy, they say he's got everything because he is the <laughs> host of the college baseball experience. Um, and I think he might have published a video of him hitting a hitting a dinger something. I, th- I thought I saw I thought I saw him publish a clip of him on the on the uh, the diamond, the mound. I don't fucking know. I I, uh, I I was intoxicated when I saw it, so I don't I don't even really remember. I just remember scrolling down being like, what the fuck is this? Anyway, give it up for the host of the college baseball experience and the man behind the scenes at SGB yet. Noah Beanick. How you doing, brother? What's going on, guys? Yeah, I was dealing with an Internet troll saying uh, something about me not being uh, a player <laughs> of the game of baseball which of course this actually fits in perfectly i went to school at point park university downtown pittsburgh two minutes away from duquesne's basketball arena uh went to plenty of a10 games in my college uh tenure or whatever you want to call it but no i was actually pitching in that video that ball went about 450 feet off of me so that's, (laughs) that's what i was doing i was making him feel bad because i actually do play and i gave up a bomb like that so you know i did play there you go there you go. And now that's how you found us, man. Give up yeah. dingers. Keep fighting. Yeah. Keep fighting the good fight. Any- I gave up giving up dingers, and now I'm with TCE. Anytime, anytime you battle adversity, it's a good fucking thing. All right. I believe, uh, I believe Gandhi said that, but uh, anyway. American dream, baby. Yeah. Gandhi definitely said he, Gandhi, big fan of the Atlantic 10 conference, by the way. Big fucking fan of the A10 conference. And uh, look, I mean, Overall, we're going to go team by team here, but uh, overall, I love the A-10. However, when I was doing my prep for this episode, I'm going through dotting, do a crazy bunch of shit, dotting the I's in the lowercase J's, and uh, eh, it's a little down right now, in my opinion. Uh, Mac, your thoughts on the, the current A-10? Yeah, definitely down in uh, what, what did they? They had one bid last year. It was a one bid league, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, yeah, it was a one bid league. And I mean, what was the last time it was a one bid league in the Atlantic 10? I remember just five, six years ago when they were getting four or five bids. You got some good coaches. I mean, you got Anthony Grant at Dayton, you got uh, Schmidt at, at, at with the Bonnies, you got but Keith Campbell. He's retired though, and he's going to his yes. son. Yeah, which he, they were up and down. Keith Dambrotti has always been good at Duquesne. Mooney, yeah. uh, glad he's healthy and back uh, for the Richmond Spiders. Actually ran into those guys at Chipotle uh, last week, and they're excited for this team. Uh, the whole team? Of course, whole team? Yeah, no, 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 the coaching staff. So, no. Uh, but And then, of course, you got my guy, Frank Martin, who's been to a Final Four year two at UMass. And then, like, locally, Colby. George Mason, who who we grew up liking, Tony Skins back at his alma mater. Love it, um, love yeah. it. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of moving parts here in this league. Archie Dunkey Miller, too. yes, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, to go back to your running into the team at Chipotle, which I, I guess you ran into maybe a, a player or two, a coach or two. Yeah. Um, I was in Laramie, and I was meeting up with some fans. Shout out to our fans, and. Uh, one of our fans, I'm not going to put him on blast, sort of. <laughs> um, he uh, he was telling me he used to work at Sonic. There you go. The restaurant. <laughs> and San Diego State with Kawhi Leonard came through the Sonic and ate their whole the whole team meal before a game. And I thought, damn, these California people coming up there and settling for Sonic? What's going on with the... The I want to know about the what they got financial problems. What the fuck <laughs> is going on, Mac? You've been a part of these teams. Have yeah. you ever uh, settled for team fast food pregame? Uh, not not pregame. You know, plenty of Chick Fil A, uh, Zaxby's, uh, Bojangles, postgame meals. But yeah, nothing uh nothing like that for pregame meal. That's supposed to be your best meal yeah. to fuel yourself. But hey, yeah. when you're Kawhi Leonard, I, maybe that's why he always gets hurt. He needs to get back to going to Sonic pregame. <laughs> he, he he's whining and dining, and now he's a soft as he gets injured every other. He needs to get back to his roots. Go to Sonic. I, I like mean, Rob Donaldson in the chat. The DoorDash on the court last year, that yes. was A-10. That was at yes. Duquesne. That's true. <laughs> yes. That's true. Now, there's two ways. I, I, was, I was in deep concentration about that comment because I was like, whoa. 
Because I was like, first off, you picture California, which is like, you know, very health conscious. So, yeah. you know, I actually don't I, I actually learned to appreciate it more than I thought. I didn't think I really cared. But then I was uh, I was searching for certain juices when I was on the East Coast last. And I was like, "Wait, you can't get it at your grocery store. And it's true. You can't. But California, you just it's there all the time. So I was shocked that San Diego State of all schools would be one of these doing this. But then part of me started thinking because, I, you know, for some reason, I I think about random shit. So I was up in the middle of the night thinking, like, why the fuck would they go to Sonic? And then I was like, well, what if Sonic's like the best restaurant in Laramie? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what if yeah. that was the, the main? What if that is, you know, them spending up essentially? Uh, I'm fucking around. I mean, look, I, it, <laughs> Laramie is like a, a nice solid three blocks, but I mean, uh, anyway, hilarious. It story. wouldn't be TC if we had 15 teams to preview and we're talking about Chipotle and Sonic for 10 minutes. 100 percent in juices. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, dude, I, I like I like fucking juices. You know what I mean? I'll get like a celery yeah. juice or some shit. Carrot juice. You know what I mean? You go to you go to a, here's what I realize. I'm not sure I do know what you mean. <laughs> But I also do like, uh, you know, I drink like Perrier all the fucking time, right? Yes. You, you go to, like, even in Vegas. I was in Vegas recently. I stopped to get gas driving back Mountain West Media Day. And I'm on the way back. I stopped to get gas. I'm like, I'm going to get a Perrier. None in the whole fucking store, which is unbelievable because in California, you, you it's not, I don't even know if California is like all on board with Perrier, but I'm just saying you could find it at every fucking store. So, Anyway, you can even find it at the Blue Wire Studio. That's that's what yes, I'm you about. can. Yes, you can. <laughs> big, big Perrier drink. Perrier Dundee. They call me on the streets. Right? <laughs> uh, all right. Look, let's get into this shit. Um, before we get into it, though, I want to tell you that the Atlantic 10 2023 24 season previous brought to you by Game Time. Yes. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be that stressful. Game Time's the fast and easy way. To buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater that is near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll be having at that very event. And forget planning months in advance. What's that ever done for anybody? All right? You never know when your day could be up. Don't plan months in advance. All right? Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Uh, get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And they have the game time guarantee, which means you'll always get the best price. In fact, if you find tickets in the same section or row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. I repeat, you can make money, essentially, if you find that. Uh, download the game time app because you want to snag the tickets without the stress. All right. Create an account. Use that promo code CFBX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Once again, CFBX is that redeeming code. You're going to want to enter for $20 off. Download the game time app. Last bit of tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. All right. We are back. On the college basketball experience, Atlantic 10, 2023 season preview. All right. Uh, I mean, let's just go alphabetically. Let's go from the top. The Davidson Wildcats. Wildcats. Um. 16 and 16 season and Matt McKillop, son of Bob McKillop's first season at the helm. Eight and 10 in conference play. A little bit of a red flag there. And guess what? It's not fun when three key players depart. Foster Lawyer, gone. Sam mm -hmm. Menenga, gone. Desmond Watson, gone. Um, I always dig Davidson. However... I'm a bit of a skeptic this year. They're bringing in Angelo Brizzi from uh, Villanova and Jarvis Moss from Stanford. So they're actually using the portal, which I know previously had kind of been something that hadn't done much. Um, They do return Grant Huffman at the two guard spot. He's a senior. Same with Connor, uh, Connor Cochera. Uh, they also bring back Reed Bailey and David Skogman at the uh, the big man spot. Fifth year senior. 
Uh, all of those guys got substantial minutes last year. I think the real question though is who the hell's going to score? Yeah, because they lost a they lost uh over forty points of production from a year ago, more about forty one points. And when you look besides Huffman, who averaged nine point four points per game, everybody else kind of sh- you know kind of struggled to score a ball a little bit. Uh, that left me a little bit. I mean, I think obviously year two, Bob McKillop. I'm sorry. Matt McKillop is going to feel a little bit more, you know, familiar with coaching scenarios and what he wants on offense and defense. And that could be uh, a bonus to Davidson, but I was kind of reluctant to think that they would be uh, very good this year. Uh, Your thoughts, Mac. Interesting team because I mean, they lose uh, lawyer and Managda. But like they didn't, they they weren't the vintage Dave Davidson team already last year scoring the basketball. So I think you you highlighted the biggest area of concern is are they going to be able to score? Because Davidson's not going to sit down and guard guard the shit out of you for forty minutes. You know Davidson they they play that Bob McKillop brand of basketball where they want to get up and down, shoot a bunch of three, share the basketball, and that's how they won all those games. Now his son's coaching Matt McKillop in his second year. Interesting team. I I. I don't think they're going to be vintage Davidson once again here. Yeah, I just I I want to lot of question that, marks. I would love for them to, to to I would love to be wrong about this. Let me say that. Mm-hmm. However, I kind of think they're uh, middle of the pack. When I say middle of the pack, probably towards the back of the middle of the pack. Yeah, which means kind of the back, the downside of the conference. Noah, your thoughts on the Wildcats? So great place to start for our uh, first disagreement because I, I think this team is at the front of the middle of the pack. Um, they lose their top four scores from a year ago. Uh, only two transfers come in, which you said previously they had been a little reluctant. I think they saw the writing on the wall, at least from uh, Matt McKillop, and they bring in a guard from Stanford in Moss who shot 40% from three point and granted a small sample size. And you bring in Angelo Breezy from Villanova, which in the transfer portal, I think a Villanova guard is considered to be gold. Um, it's actually quite impressive after losing your top four scorers to come back the next year, have a projected starting five that had all five guys average double digit minutes from a season ago. Four of them averaged 20 minutes. Also, the projected starting five includes three seniors, all of whom who have been in the Davidson McKillop system. So I think, uh, in the A-10 specifically, we talked about this a little bit pre-show. I think this is a conference that you're really going to have to rely on culture. I don't think it's going to be as good this year. I think the talent's quite down uh, compared to previous years in the A-10. Last year, Matt McKillop had a young team, and he himself was a first-year head coach. Um, you have to trust that McKillop's pedigree and some of that one-possession games from a season ago, they were 1-6 in six in games decided by three or less points. So mm-hmm. I think Davidson is a better-than-500 team, and – that's where we saw them finish in 2023. So I, I think it's 2023. So I think it's a slight improvement this season. Well, I mean, you know, David Shula was never Don Shula. You know what I mean? That happens. <laughs> that happens yeah. uh, it does. You know, from time to time. Um, look, I hope I'm wrong. I just don't. I just think they're kind of towards the back of, of the A-10 this year. But the, the one thing I will give you credit for, uh, that is a valid point is I really feel like the A-10's bottom could be on the top. That's how open this fucking conference is. Agreed. So, um, there is that. All right, let's jump over and talk about the Dayton Flyers. Flying high, I'm still upset that they didn't get to experience the one seed in 2020. I mean, that can change your whole fucking program. You want to talk about the worst luck, it has to be Dave, or Dayton, not Davidson. I just feel like they, they've been a good basketball school my entire life. The one year, though, that they get like they get really to that next level. There's no postseason. I know San Diego State, too, and San Diego State got over it last year. But damn, did that I just think about what if uh, Anthony Grant's back for his seventh season. I've been to this uh, fantastic. Uh, what is it? Dayton Arena that they host the uh, the, the first four. This, this fan base, if you catch a Dayton home game, I think is, is awesome. I think I highly recommend it for mid-major college basketball. I think it's one of the best in, in uh, college hoops. Um, they lose 
Tumani Kamara, which was huge. They also yeah. lose Mustafa Amzil, who I thought was a good player as well. RJ Blakeney leaves. Same with Mike Sharva jump jumps. I don't know how to fucking talk. Um, that, 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 those are some decent hits, though. I feel like Amzil and Kamara were big hits. Um, incoming, though. They, they got after it. They went they, they went a little deep sea diving a little bit there. Uh, you know, Cheeks coming in from Bob Morris and where he only uh, averaged about 15 and a half points per game. Complete player, man. Almost two steals a game. 3.5 assist, 4.4 boards, 1.3 blocks. So I kind of love that get. Um, they also brought in Isaac Jack from the Buffalo Bulls. We know Buffalo has been somewhat talented lately, but they just haven't been able to put it together. He's 6'11". He was just a freshman last year who averaged about just a shade under six points a game and four and a half boards. Um, they also went out to bring in your boy, Nate Santos from Pitt. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, getting a, getting a Pitt Panther on this team, but he only played seven minutes a game at Pitt last year. But, hey. Maybe you build for the future. And then they got Javon Bennett from Merrimack, the Warriors. Um, Bennett did average just a shade under 10 points a game at the guard spot. They return some key players, though, I think that you could be excited about. And when I say that, I mean, Deron Holmes. He's a fucking stud. Um, 18 and a half points a game, 8.1 boards a season ago, almost two blocks per game. Uh, They return him. They return Kobe Elvis at the guard spot. They also return uh, Malachi Smith. Um, and I, this is a team that I do think is deeper than most because I actually think they, they had one of the deeper benches when I was going through the A-10. Um, so it's no surprise that I have them in the – I think they are competing for a Atlantic 10 conference regular season conference championship – and I think they have one of the best home court environments. So you'd be foolish not to have them at one, two, or three. Um, so I have them in that. I'll, I'll reveal my order at the yeah. end here. They got to stay healthy. Last year they were injured a little bit. But, uh, Mac, what do you make of the Flyers? Yeah, hard, hard not to like this team. Hard to honestly make a case that they're not number one because they bring back Deron Holmes, uh, who's going to be the preseason player of the year. Malachi Smith's good. Um, that backcourt with him and Colby Ellis is going to be good. I, I really like this team. And you just look at what Anthony Grant's been able to do there. They went, they've won 20 games every year except the shorted COVID year. So um, really consistent. It seems like they were right there last year, but injuries plagued them, couldn't, and then ended up losing to VCU in the finals in Brooklyn. I, I like this team to be right there from the get-go. And like you said, they have probably the best home court in the league. That place is bonkers. So – as loyal fan base as they come, I like the Flyers this year a lot. One of my only concerns is like, I like Anthony Grant, yeah. but other than that COVID year where they were just on fire, I feel like they always drop a game or two that they shouldn't in conference play. You know, like I feel like there's always a game where you're like, what? They were 15 point favorites or 12 point yeah. favorites. How the hell they lose that outright? Um, Noah, what do you make of the Flyers? I think there's bound to be one or two sleepy spots in conference play, though. I, Again, once once again this year, I think it's going to be more of the same. This team brings back the most production and experience that you're going to find in the A-10, I think. Most talented roster for sure. I, they are my number one team in the A-10, and I agree with a lot of your points. So I'm going to go right to the schedule, and I'm just going to point this out. They don't really challenge themselves in the non-conference here this year. Uh, they have a road game at Northwestern. Then they have a uh, – I, I think it's a – a tournament uh, where they play LSU in the first game. I, I don't quite know where that's at, not on the screen in front of me right now to help you guys out. But I think the toughest part of this schedule um, really is the, the beginning of the conference schedule where you have a little bit of a stretch with uh, – sorry – the, the end of the conference schedule. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. You have a back-to-back road. Loyola Chicago is supposed to be much improved this season at St. Louis, home against VCU, the final three games of the season. That's where this team's really going to be tested, and I think you have to take the most out of the team uh, from that stretch of games this season. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, and, I mean, I guess I will reveal that I had him number one. <laughs> Surprise. 
There's still time to change. You got an hour yeah. to change your mind. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's I I I I hope they they can like I would love to see them do what San Diego State did last year. Make a deep run. All right, make a deep run. You deserve it. The fans deserve it. All right, let's switch over. Let's go to Pittsburgh, where the Duquesne Dukes and Keith Jan- Dambrot is uh still there. Seventh season. They made the CBI last year. Had a surprising year. They broke my heart a couple years ago when they had Eric Williams and everybody, and I thought, oh, they're going to be nasty. And they couldn't. They were super talented. They just couldn't put it together. So last year I thought, man, all these guys transfer out. They're going to suck. No, he got 20 and 13, 10 and 8 in conference. Uh, they were a hard team for me to understand. Um, they did lose from a season ago. Joseph Reese gone about 10 points a game. Uh, Tevin Brewer gone seven and a half points a game. Quincy McGriff uh, gone as well. And same with Austin Rotroff. Rotroff. Sounds like something you say when you're fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> rot, rot. Um, I want a rot rough. Yeah. Uh, incoming. They got uh, Hassan Drame from LaSalle. Also, oh man. <laughs> Fus- Fusini. F- that's what I thought. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> but I'm like, am I fucking that up? Fusini Drame as well from the Explorers of LaSalle. LaSalle just getting raided over there in Philadelphia. Uh, also, Andre. Savrasov from Georgia Southern transfers in, and then NC State transfer Dusan Mahorchik. I mean, <laughs> hey, what the fuck? They're all of a sudden they're like, uh, what are they? The San Antonio Spurs? Yeah. Just, gonna, <laughs> just going, uh, just going all in on the uh, the names here, going from all around the world. Um, well, look, I mean, they get they 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 lost some production, but when I look and I see Day Day Grant back, it's same with. Jimmy Clark in his fifth year, you know, Jimmy Clark, the third, may I correct myself? Um, I kind of am a little bit optimistic about the future of this team. This is one. And once again, this is another one that I thought potentially could be one of the deeper teams. Um, I just have no faith in them when they're super talented. I fade them. I think they're going to be top five or six team. On paper, they're going to finish in the middle of the pack. As much as I like them, I want them to do good. But I have a hard time when they're supposed to be good. They suck. And when they're supposed to suck, they end up being pretty decent. I think they're. Kobe, sp- can I go and can I go since I'm not as scarred as you? <laughs> sure. Go. Because I, I think I'm a little higher on this team. Losing Tevin Brewer uh, is nothing to sneeze at. However, Keith Dambrot. I think has this team poised to compete for an A-10 title. I, I said what I said about Dayton, and I truly believe that. I think their head and shoulders the best team in this conference. However, Dambrot added plenty of front court depth, which was their Achilles heel last year. They could not compete against the rest of the A-10's big men. They added uh, Savrasov, who put up 14-7 and seven at Georgia Southern. He's 6-7. Um, they had the Dream Brothers, who were also at St. Peter's uh, during that tournament run. Uh, to go along with Dusan Mahorsic. I stumbled over that name too. Um, but this went from the weakest front court in the A-10 to a very solid one to be paired up with maybe the best pair of shooting guards in the conference and Dede Grant and Jimmy Clark the third. The ceiling of this team depends on uh, the kind of strides that Kareem, Kareem Rogier can take at the point guard position because I think specifically him distributing the ball to the other big-time pieces around him is what's going to matter most this Duquesne Duke, Duke's squad's potential this season. Hear me out here, because this is where I think you're wrong. Um, he's never finished better than fifth at Duquesne. And that includes, that includes, when I go back and look at this team. I'm not as scarred as you. That's why this I'm 2019 here. roster, dude. <laughs> Let me tell you about this roster. All right. You had Eric Williams, who's now at like San Diego, but he's good. You had... Uh, Marcus Weathers, who was a fucking beast. You had Sincere Carey on this team. You had, uh, yep. like, this team was super talented. I'm forgetting their other, was it Michael Hughes? Uh, Michael Hughes, that I think was the big man that was good. They were very talented for, like, three or four straight years, and they still couldn't crack the top four. Now, you could argue the A-10 was deeper then, which I think would be accurate. However, I think they're going to finish, like, 
fifth, sixth, seventh, something like that. Uh, on paper, they're going to be there. But uh, look, night in, night out, I can't count on them to stay focused. So I am uh, fading them a little bit here. Uh, Mac, what do you make of Duquesne? Yeah, so we we played uh, Dan Brott's teams early. Like they, that would be our charity exhibition game. They were always good. Uh, I remember sincere carry at Duquesne, um, not a Kent State these last couple of years. So it's 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 interesting with this team because I, it's coming back to me that at one point in the A10 last year, we had a discussion who could win the A10, and we made a case for about eleven teams. So I go back in and. Literally, the whole league outside of VCU, Rhode Island, and um, Loyola, Chicago, all finished within five games. I think it's the same thing here with Duquesne. I think I'm with you, Colby. More fifth, six. I don't trust them to get over the hump, but I do think this is a good team, though, especially on paper. Yeah. I want to mention this, too, since I brought it up for D- uh, for Dayton. Duquesne does not challenge themselves outside of conference, and actually they, never do. they, they only played two road games before non-con, one at Nebraska, the other at Marshall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're deep. I, I think they're actually, from on paper, they're one of the more talented rosters. If that makes sense, you know. All right, let's move along. Next up, we're going to a team I am bullish on, a team that I do think will be in the top five of the conference, and that is the Fordham Rams. <laughs> Look, I know that they lose Darius Quisenberry, not related to Dan, um, and they lose Khalid Moore. And you're thinking, holy shit, that's like 35 points a game or something. I don't even know. But I thought I thought it was a great first year for Ergo. I really did. I thought it was just an unbelievable first year, and I believe I buy into the culture that he's he's you know building there in uh, – in in uh, what are they somewhere in New York City like the are they in the Bronx no they're, they're in, in the Bronx yeah they're yeah. in the Bronx yeah. yep um they also lose uh Novitskitsky I don't fucking know somebody they lost somebody all right uh but they're bringing in I was I mean this is a nice kid this is a nice kid here in uh, Jaffet Mador I might be fucking that up but I do remember watching some shitty UTSA basketball games last year and being like, Hey, who the fuck is that? He is their only good player. Uh, they, they get him. He's transferring in. Now I get it. You could sit there and say, you know, well, who's going to score the ball besides him. They also brought in Joshua Riviera country club from Lafayette, the leopards. And, uh, Look, uh, I, I think some of the other guys they got on this team are going to have to step up, but I believe in, in what they're building here. Antrell Carlton, uh, or Charlton, I should say, uh, is, is a guy that I think is going to, you know, he played 32 minutes a game last year. I think he's going to be a, he's going to be asked to score the ball more. I expect him to average in double digits. Will Richardson, who was just a freshman a year ago, played 19 minutes a game. He's going to be, I think that's the one you really circle. I think he's going to, to, to score double digits as well. They also have Elijah Gray, who was a freshman a year ago. And I I think this team in general are going to be chippy. I thought, you know, last year it seemed like they were fire at home. They would suck on the road. Um, I just think this team is, is I buy into the culture that they're building there. And that's why I do think they're going to overachieve their expectation. And uh, I do have them as a top five team in the A-10. Mac, your thoughts on the Rams? Yeah, and you talk about the culture. That culture is Villanova, the Jay Wright culture. Kyle Neptune got it going, got him to 500, then hands the keys to Keith Ergo. They go 25-8 and eight last year. I think Forum's got a chance to win the league. I know they lost. Uh, Quinsbury did a little bit of everything for him. He was their good more guy. was good, too. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, they lose production, but I'm buying into the Villanova culture. They were really good at home. I think they stay right there, and they're right there in the top five again this year. Ram it. Let's go. Go. Hey. 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 You know Noah, I have a feeling you're fading the Rams. <laughs> it's my job, I guess, to play heel on this show. I didn't realize <laughs> it until uh, we were live, but I-, I can't help but feel like the heart and soul of this team was lost in the offseason. Darius Quisenberry and Khalid Moore we're talking about here. I think it's going to be a big blow, and I'll even argue that I question if the Rams even finished in the top half of the league last year without that duo. Ergo, in his Hater. second year, 
uh, with a young roster coming off a 25 win season. That's not going to catch anybody off guard. Last year, this team was best in conference ATS 20 and 13. I think they fall back to the pack. Their hard nosed defensive mentality is going to keep them afloat, but I don't think Fordham's going to tank, but I have them falling back to the pack. It's culture play, man. It's culture play. It's not Wildcats. The, it's not about the players, right? It's not about the players, right? It's about the culture. Hey, I think that's a good view of it, too. A10, I think you might have to bet on culture this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, fascinating. It's going to be interesting to watch the four. I question man. it. Ergo's only in year two. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. All right. Well, next, let's, next, let's go to a team that needs to start their football program. The George Mason Patriots. What are you doing? You filthy, filthy horse. Look, we love George Mason. <laughs> that area. And you're losing this. Cause now you got Dan Snyder getting rid of the Redskins. Or they said the NFL forced him to sell the Redskins. And you're, you're, you are forgetting you had a window you still have that window to steal the great people of virginia maryland and dc george mason start your fucking football program all right but now let's talk about the basketball program because hey i mean there was a time where jimmy laranega had this program rolling last year they were i thought a rather frustrating team like they had moments where they looked really good they had moments when they looked Pretty shitty to me. Uh, Kim English is now at Providence. That could be a blessing in disguise because I know English was recruiting well. He's bringing in talent. But Tony Skin was the starting point guard on that Jimmy Laranaga team. And Tony Skin's going to do what he's got to do to win. I remember first game of the NCAA, or no, the conference championship game. He got in a little the nuts. He got in a little <laughs> dust up. Yeah, he got in a little dust up, suspended the first, uh, the first game of the NCAA tournament. Didn't. I mean, the Patriots still rose. They battled that adversity and got that dub. I think that was against Michigan State, if memory serves me correct. But um, I like the hire. And, uh, I mean, I think he walks into a more talented team than people think. Now, I know he loses Josh Adoro. He followed uh, English to uh, to Providence. He loses Victor Bailey, who was good, too. Uh, Devin Cooper, Devontae Gaines, all key players. So they lose some, some key players. They, they really do. But I still think the fact that he returns Ronald Polite, the third. He brings in Darius Maddox from Virginia Tech, who I'm familiar with. He also brings in uh, Keyshawn Hall from the UNLV Running Rebels uh, and Amari Kelly from UNC Wilmington, who I saw play live last year down there in Wilmington, North Carolina for the Seahawks. Uh, Also brings in Jared Billups from Seattle. A lot of transfers coming in. Woody Newton from Oklahoma State. I do believe he's still pending a waiver, right? Is that, I believe, uh, that's up in the air a little bit still. Also, they brought in uh, Jalen Haynes from East Tennessee State with the Buccaneers. Um, they, I mean, I, I think this team could be better than what we think. Now, do I expect them to be an NCAA tournament team? Certainly not. But. I do have them. Let me just co- make sure I'm correct here. Uh, yeah, I have them in the back, but the, the top of the back, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't have them in the complete cellar, but I have them rather further back. Uh, Mac, what's your opinion of the George Mason Patriots? Yeah, you talk about the glory days of Jim Laranaga, the point guard, Tony Skin comes home. Mason was a weird team last year. Like I said, we made a case. We had that segment where we made a case for about every team at one point uh, with about a month to go. George Mason was right there. They finished the year strong. I, I, I'm i kind of with you where I think this may be a little bit of growing pains. Tony Skin's first job did a good job with Kevin Willard at Maryland. Obviously knows the area, but there's a lot unknown with this team, especially in year number one. I'll probably say in that seven to ten, eight to ten range for the Patriots. But, I mean, this could be a team that gets better as the year goes uh, goes along since it's a first-year head coach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just think they got the right guy. It just might take a little. might might take yeah, one year. No doubt. Noah, what, what, what's your take on uh, Tony Skin and the George Mason Patriots? Once more, some of the same from me. Uh, Tony Skin getting his first head coaching gig at his alma mater is definitely a feel-good story. However, I fear that it will be just a feel-good story because – 
It's a new first time head coach with a brand new roster returning only three players from last season. I'm just not too high on the situation. So it's a team that's in the bottom three for me. Ooh. 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 I think he's a good hire too, but I just, I'm not there yet. He's hating on the Patriots. Mm -hmm. This guy, this fucking guy. All right. Let's, (laughs) let's move along to the colonials. Well, I think they're still the Colonials. They're trying to change it because they're a bunch of nah, fucking it's idiots. The revolutionaries now. <laughs> Get with the program, goal. Is it really? I think so. It, oh my I'm god! Pretty sure. No, correct. It, correct that. No, I, I demand I you did, correct it right now. I, did yeah. they actually <laughs> officially change it? I think they did. No. no oh fuck. my god! All right, From they finished last. Bunch of fucking the rebel. The, the <laughs> oh my god! The Colonials. That's not fucking offense. It's what happened. You fucking idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Um, all right. They're, they're, oh, yeah. They're, Here, I'm going to I'm going to share my screen for you guys. Just so 15. <laughs> yeah, they, they just they just got on my shit list. All right. Um, yeah. And as you can see here, revolutionaries, George Wars, George Washington University has changed its school nickname to the revolutionaries <laughs> in a video posted by the school. That was May 26, 2023. Yep. <laughs> I uh, probably it. changed it back. Yep. Because that's ridiculous. What? Revolutionary War. What? You killed Englishmen, right? Bastards. Well, you hate the English? That's racist. It's <laughs> fucking racist. This is an auto fade team yeah. again. Unbelievable. I, I, look, I actually came in kind of bullish, but now now I have my most hated team in the CAA. <laughs> I mean, the A10. In the, yeah, the, I'm going to consider them a CAA team because yeah. of the colonial. Um, what a ridiculous what the revolutionaries fuck you all right look i i had a good i had a good spiel here i was excited mm-hmm. to talk about <laughs> the dub james bishop is back maximus edwards is back they 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 uh were active in the portal you know they went out and got benny schroeder from uh oklahoma antoine smith from evansville baba tunde a uh, king bola from uh, Auburn, Darren Buchanan from UVA, Garrett Johnson from Princeton. And they lost, you know, a couple guys from a season ago, Hunter Dean, Brendan Adams, Ricky Lindo. Uh, so I thought this team would be better. But uh, you know what? They pissed me off. No, I'm joking. Uh, I, I think this team is going to be middle of the pack because I do think they're actually somewhat talented. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I hate them now. So, uh Mac, your thoughts on G-Dub? Yeah, well, another Jim Jimmy Laranega guy at the helm, Chris Caputo, in his second year, I actually thought he did a pretty good job last he did. year. He did. He finished, yeah. yeah, I thought they overachieved. Uh, Caputo was there when George Mason made their run as well. So, yeah, it, it, I think he's the right guy there. But, yeah, Mac can't get past his name uh, change. It. I mean, this is ridiculous. Um, I would probably say in that same range with George Mason. Bottom – Bottom half, but not at the basement. But that name is going to at least add four to five losses a year. So <laughs> it's definitely just, ATS. I love how so they fucking correct soft. it with the revolution. Yes. I mean, it's just so fucking lame. Uh, I hate 2023, man. I fucking hate it. Man. Fucking dumb as There's hell. no originality. There's no fucking originality. Fuck well, George Washington. Revolutionaries oh. might be original. No, because they have a revolution MLS team. Ah. Uh. You know, it's just I didn't know. <laughs> and, it's, and come on, get specific, like come on. Yeah, just original, just be a little more original. Like that is saying nothing to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, we're the revolutionaries. <laughs> like that's that's it's one of the lamest fucking mascots in college. They do they do have some good pieces back though. I they, mean, do. Little, they do, they yeah. do, man. That's what I'm saying. Bishop, Bishop's a motherfucker. If, if yeah. you want me to tell you the truth, I did have them uh, number five in the A10. Uh, <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, now they've dropped to number twelve, and uh, things are changing. No bias. Fast. Yeah, no bias. We we you know we don't we don't we don't have biases here at the college basketball yeah. experience. All right. Um, uh, Noah, talk to me about this stupid, stupid, stupid program. All right, and and at university. You know, I like the projected starting five for Washington, George Washington. It includes three seniors. Um, Bishop the fourth, we already mentioned, he averaged 21 and five last season alongside Maximus Edwards, who had 10 and six. Both of those guys played 33 plus minutes a game, and I expect more of the same 
However, the transfers coming in have never played that much before, and they lose 60% of their minutes from last season due to graduation or transfer portal. Having six of your seven bench players freshmen, I think this is probably going to be a team that plays like five or six guys max um, throughout the year. So I think it's an issue in the A-10. Um, of course, having a, a star like Bishop could prevent it, but I think a sophomore slump for Caputo at G-Dub is very possible with this young and inexperienced roster. Yeah, yeah, I think they suck. Um, <laughs> I mean, was anybody ever offended at Colonials? Shut the no. fuck up. I have never heard anybody my entire life. I mean, this is this. It's just, it's just, uh, this is... Let's end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 be, the best part is is it's going to become like a natural habit for you to shit on them every time we name their game. It's just going to yeah. flow right off your tongue. Revolutionaries, Rob, this stupid-ass filthy team. <laughs> Rob Donaldson just wants to call them the George Washington basketball team. Can we do that? Yeah. Hey, they're yeah. close to the Redskins. Football team, basketball yeah. team. There we We're go. We're such a stupid society. We're such a stupid <laughs> fucking society. Like, we really are. Like, I, yeah, like it's idiocracy. <laughs> we're having idiot. We're we're living in idiocracy. If you've ever seen that movie, um, all right. Let's let's switch. I'm trying to be more positive. It's just it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Can't be more positive. Uh, the revolutionaries. Uh, LaSalle. All right, they're the explorers. Oh, what a great fucking name, right? No, it's not. Columbus. This one sucks too. All right. Um, any of these. Soft ass names like this, where the expo- we explore. Um, but I do like Fred Dunphy. All right. Yeah. He, he's been exploring basketball for like a fucking century. All right. Um, year one, he was 15 and 19. They were a hard dude. They were a hard out sometimes. It was hard to foot like after watching him a couple times, I'd be like, hey, I think LaSalle is pretty good. And then they give you a true lemon. And then you're like, fuck, I thought they were good. They were a hard, like certain night in, night out. They were a hard team to get a gauge on for me, but I, I am a big fan of Fran Dumfries, and I think he's a very good coach. Now they obviously lose Josh Nickelberry, who was a fucking stud for them last year, and they lose both Dramas. Uh, that's gonna hurt. But they did go out and uh, bring in a Miles or Milos. I'm sorry, uh, Kovacek. I don't know how to pronounce these names. He's from Highland Community College. Uh, they also brought in some freshmen. He doesn't really use the portal. Fran Dunphy, old school. He says, what? Portal? Uh, look, they re- they return Khalil Brantley, who averaged 14.3 points a game. Uh, Jameer uh, Brickus is back as well. So the backcourt should be solid. Anwar Gill at the third guard spot. We got about 21 minutes a game last year. Deshaun Shepard. Uh, is their fourth guard, and then they, you know they're kind of playing small ball because uh, that, that, that short of their they're basically going with the four guard lineup, and then Rokas, oh man, Josius, I don't know how to fucking pronounce his name. <laughs> um, but uh, either way, I can tell you this: this team will be better than what we think. They'll be better than what we think. Um, and I certainly have them better than uh, George Washington now. Um, so, uh, they, I did have them in the very back guys, not, not the, not the last, but I had them as a bottom five team. Mac, your thoughts on the explorers. Uh, they weren't either. They were, they were supposed to win like two games in the a 10 last year, but Dumphy does what Dumphy does overperforms. They were seven and six, uh, in a 10 play before the kind of the wheels fell off, got banged up down the stretch. I think this is going to be the team that comes from the basement and pushes for a top five spot. I'm trusting Dumphy. He did this at Temple. Um, first year there, 12 and 18, then jumps to 21 wins. Then they go to the American Conference, nine wins, and then they jump to 26 wins. I think he's going to overperform, and they're in that five to seven range. Uh, I'm trusting Fran Dumphy here to overperform once again. Uh, I, I think they will overperform on their projections, but it's a, yeah. the question is, is – how much can they overperform? Um, Noah, your thoughts on on uh, the Explorers, which they should change that name because uh, Ford Explorers got more DUIs than uh, <laughs> any other car over a 10-year period from 1996 to 2006, so you should change your fucking name. Uh, Noah, Noah, what do you uh, what do you make of them? It's a common theme here from all of us. I, I, 
You think they can over overperform because Fran Dumphy is going to be a future Hall of Fame coach. Then again, the roster doesn't knock your socks off. I think they're uh, bottom five team in the A-10. They lost three players uh, from their starting five last season, um, and they didn't add anybody in the portal. So simple, simple math says it's going to be a little bit of a depth issue here for me. Um, but then again, wouldn't be surprised if they overperform. Yep, that's pretty. That's pretty. I think we gave kind of the same analysis. Yeah, all three of us. Uh, let's talk about the Ramblers, Sister Jean. Um, they were supposed to be awesome last year. They weren't. They were god awful. Yeah, Tatum but also Sean awful. Green was supposed to knock off uh, Sister Jean, but she's still alive too. So that's true. <laughs> Sean Green, Sean Green did wish wish the death of Sister Jean at one point. I think he was drunk though, and I think he was mad that he lost a weight, which is all understandable. <laughs> Now she's back. She's throwing out the fucking first pitch at the at the Cubs game. She's doing it. She's like 104 years old. I don't even know if that counts as a pitch, but the ball left her hand. All right. <laughs> um, Drew Valentine is entering his third season, four and 14, 15th in the A10 a year ago. Marquise Kennedy is gone. Bryce Golden, who I thought was a big time get last year, gone. Uh, St. Thomas gone. They went out and they they uh, you know. They were interesting because they brought in Des Watson from Davidson. I mean, that shoot got, shoot we, the guns off. Yeah, do we got a little rivalry going on here? Um, I mean, to to go from Davidson to I feel like it's the same thing. <laughs> um, Braden Norris is back though. He's a good he's a good guard for them, and also they brought in Greg Dolan from Cornell. This guy was a stub at the big red last year, uh, 13 points a game with the big red. And then, like I says, they, or like I said, they have Des Watson. They also bring back Philip Austin from a season ago. Uh, and, and they went out in the portal and they brought in a, a fucking Dartmouth transfer and Dame at a, at a, how do I, a delicate, a delicate, a delicate, <laughs> a delicate. Sounds right. Um, he averaged look, I mean, they put up big numbers. I actually, I actually kind of like what they did in the portal. They also brought in a guy that played 21 minutes a game at Oral Roberts and Patrick Mwamba. Love those kids. They also still have Tom Welch. He's, uh, the, I feel like he's been there for 30 years, but he's still there. They also have Ben Schweiger, Schweiger, um, and uh, you know, I feel like Sheldon. Edwards is another one they should be somewhat excited about. They're deeper than they were a year ago, and I think they're going to be better offensively. That was one of the things that struck me about watching them last year is they could not shoot the ball well. Short no. of Norris, I felt like the whole team could not shoot. Um, with all that said, is this a bounce-back year? Um, I think so. I think it is a bounce-back year because I do like when – I, when I like analyze their starting five and their like seven- or eight-man rotation – I think it's one of the better in the A-10. So I do have them finishing in the top five. I think they bounced back. Remember how good they were at home prior to last year? I think they try to reestablish that home court. You know, you come into Chicago, you're leaving with an L. All right? So I think they will be a top five team in the A-10. Mac, your thoughts on the Ramblers? Yeah, we're agreeing here. I, I love taking teams after they completely fall on their face and don't meet expectations. For Roster wise, it's not the issue. I do have a, some concerns about Valentine headed into his third year. Obviously, loses twenty. They 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 failed to win twenty games for the first time since two thousand seventeen. I think they get back to their winning ways, and I think that they actually could challenge for this league. I mean, on paper, the home court, um, and I think it's a proving year for Valentine. And I I like this veteran roster to bounce back here. Yeah, Noah, your thoughts on the Ramblers? Kind of right there with you guys once again, like. Not all the way bought in the Drew Valentine based on his first two years here at Loyola. Yeah. Um, and Braden Norris, I think he's a great player, and he's one of the last ones remaining from the Ramblers' dream tournament runs. And they, I think they did a good job to surround him with offensive talent. He won't be the only option for this team this year. Um, again, Drew Valentine is not – he's no Porter Moser. I look for this team to take a step up, but I don't know how – how high they can climb in the A-10. So I'm going to limit them to like a, a top six ceiling. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I think they're going to be fascinating to watch night in, night out. Uh, Shout out to the chat. We're rocking along. So damn, I missed you guys. I didn't even know it. There we go. We're back, baby. All right. 
Also, Let's... I wanted to mention this too. Loyola only plays one road game in the preseason at Tulsa. However, shout out to them because they're playing on November 8th, which is not opening night. The whole country, for some reason, needs to play on opening night, which is November yeah. 6th. 6th. Yeah. There's only like 20 games here on November 8th, and this one is in that Barstool Classic. So um, I think there will be quite a few eyes on this game against Florida Atlantic. And then they also, um, they're in the CBS Sports Classic. Uh, they wait, play wait. Creighton. The Barstool Classic is in Chicago this year, though, so. Not a true. Is it? Them. A little home cooking there, baby. In Philadelphia in last year. I think it's yeah. in Chicago this year. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's move along to Wonderline Mac once was employed by this guy, Frank Martin and the UMass Minutemen. Man, early in the year last year, UMass as a dog was doing it. They had like, they were in like, I feel like Myrtle Beach just upsetting teams left and right. Or maybe it was Charleston. I don't remember. But uh, this team then got beat up. So early, they showed some real signs of life early on. Then I felt like injuries plagued them the rest of the year. Noah Fernandez is gone now. Same with RJ Luis, TJ Weeks, DeAndre Dominguez, Isaac Conte, and Wildens Levicu. All gone. Solid tri- contributors from a year ago. Mm-hmm. But I mean, just being healthy this year, you're uh, you're you're liable to have a, a better season than. Uh, I mean, dude, you guys remember the lineups last year? I felt like every time I would take UMass and lose, I'd look and it's like, oh, four guys. All, and, yeah. and they wouldn't announce yeah. it. That was the yeah, most yeah. frustrating yeah. part of it all. They, uh, they, they, they would all be on jumpsuits on the, on the sideline. You'd be like, well, they're not winning tonight. Yeah. yeah. Glad yeah. we, glad we put that $300 on the line. We, yeah, um, we, we picked these games 24 hours in advance at midnight the night before. Glad to know like two minutes before the game, they're not playing. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, so Frank Martin was 15 and 16 in year one. Uh, it's your boy here, man. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious what you what you meant. Like, I, I, I know I can sit here and just rattle off, but uh, I guess let me do that then. They have a brand new <laughs> team. They, they have seven Completely. freshmen coming in, seven freshmen coming in. Um, Keon Thompson is, is penciled in to be their starting point guard. Rasul Diggins, uh, their two. Matt Cross. Remember old Matt Cross, uh, twelve point two points uh, a game a, a season ago, and then they, they went out and and they have uh, transferred from South Carolina where Martin previously was. Daniel Hank in Sanford, um, and then Josh Cohen coming in from St. Francis, PA. Cohen was a stud with them, um, but everyone else is new, so the depth is incredibly young. Not using the portal that much, bringing in recruits though. Uh, Mac, what do you make of them? Yeah, Frank's not a big uh, portal guy. I I think I think they're going to be better just because they're going to stay healthy. And I think if you look at Frank's years at South Carolina, it took a minute to build that. I think it's going to take a, another year at UMass. I think year three is the year that they really take a step. I think they're kind of in that middle uh, middle to back half of the pack in the A10. But I think that they're going to get better and better as the year goes along because those freshmen, those seven freshmen that are not projected to start are going to get better, more reps. And I, I think this is a team we can back as dogs. You know, Frank's always good as a dog. So um, I think this team will get better and better as the year goes on, but they're not going to compete for the A-10 this year. Yeah, and by the way, uh, George Washington, you unoriginal little bitches with your little revolutionaries. You know what a Minuteman is? It's uh, the definition, according to uh, Google, is uh, – yeah, in the period preceding and during the American Revolution, a member of a class of American militia militiamen who volunteered to be ready for service at a minute's notice. Um, and then the other one says an American Revolution militiamen who agreed to be ready for military duty uh, minutemen. But essentially, essentially the same fucking thing. Right. Very. So we very have, yeah. What's that? So we have three Rams in this conference and two revolutionaries, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, and, <laughs> and uh, I mean, dude, I'm okay with UMass is when they've had it forever, but they're basically biting their fucking thing. The original, you fucking losers, George Washington. All right, um, Noah, what do you make of UMass? Yeah, so I like the projected starting five here for UMass. We see three returners to go along with a 20 point per game mid major transfer. And a guy that Martin, I mean, am I right here? He recruited him to South Carolina, Mac. 
Yes. Yep. So, yep. however, just like George Washington, I think having seven freshmen and not a single older player on the bench in the A-10 is quite an issue. Um, Martin and the Minutemen found out just how harsh injuries and a lack of depth can be last year based on the conference schedule. I think if any of that even close to happens this year, um, it's going to be more of the same. The A-10 was down and UMass finished 13th. This roster, in my eyes, is not as talented as last year's. So UMass, they're a bottom three team for me as well. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't have them that far down. I didn't Hater. have them that far down. <laughs> Cut, wow. Um, yeah, trust the culture, baby. They right were the bottom tank. three last year. It's not that bold of a take. Well, I mean, half the roster was injured. I was to say, early on, yeah. they were beating some pretty good teams, I feel. Maybe Colorado. They have one, yeah. If they have one injury, automa- like, automatically you're having an inexperienced freshman who averaged five minutes a game, like the previous ten games. He's now filling in as a starter. They're due to be healthier this year, though. I feel like they were one of the most injured teams in college basketball last year. Even still, I, I feel like Martin likes to rotate through a lot of guys. Right, Mac? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Defensively. Yeah. Reading, yes. read it, read it. Behind that, yes, is a fuck you, Noah. All right? <laughs> um, He'll yank your ass out if you ain't gonna fucking guard anybody. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, let's let's hop over, hop over and talk about the Rhode Island Rams. Are they still the fucking Rams? Maybe that's offensive. All right. Um, this one we were way off on last year. I thought this team would be a little bit better going out. The fact they had a couple guys that I thought, you know, they were able to get. I was kind of buying into Archie Miller year one. Uh, not that I called for them to make the tournament, but I definitely thought they'd be better than nine and 22 and five and 13 in conference. Um, Ishmael Leggett's gone. He was a stud. Rayon Freeman, gone. He was a stud. Jalen Carey was a solid contributor. Malik Martin was a solid contributor. Even Sebastian Thomas was a solid contributor. They're all gone. But hell, if you're nine and 22, I guess guess you kind of want them gone. Yeah. Um, incoming is Luis Courtright from Quinnipiac, the Aqueduct. Jaden House from High Point. He averaged 17 points a game at, 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 at High Point. And by the way, Courtright also averaged over 10 points a game with Quinnipiac. He also brings in Zach, or I'm sorry, Zeke Montgomery. Is that Zach? I don't fuck it. I think it's Zeke. Uh, from Bradley, the Braves, bringing in, getting some Missouri Valley t- talent in there. Uh, they also bring in David Green from La Tech, uh, who played, uh, you know, some solid minutes there at La Tech. Um, also, Tyson Brown from Florida Southwestern State. We all watch them. And, uh, yeah, that's that's your team. But you're returning, you're returning a couple, actually barely anybody, but uh, Rory Stewart is is back. Got to be happy with old Roy Stewart. You also have Brandon Weston back. Uh, this is a team that has a lot of freshmen, a lot of transfers. But yet, I, I kind of believe that this team can't be worse than last year's team. I will call for them to be better than a season ago. But I still have them towards the back middle. Mac, what's your take on the Rhode Island Rams? Kind of the same as LaSalle and UMass, where I'm just going to blindly – Trust Archie Miller. He's won in this league at Dayton for years and years. Uh, I think he got rid of the guys he needed to get rid of. They had a bad culture there. I think he's going to start seeing some signs. I'm with you. Middle of the pack to probably back half in that 10 range. So I'll blindly trust Archie Miller to get this thing going. Uh, Year three, I think, is going to be a big year just like UMass and Frank. Yeah. Noah, you ramming it? Not quite. Um, <laughs> Archie Miller, I gave the benefit of the doubt last season with a so-so roster, and he had a year to forget one of Rhode Island basketball program's worst years since I was born. Um, Miller loses his top four scores from a team that was not efficient offensively last year. Um, they were 316th in adjusted offensive efficiency, which was 15th out of 15 in the A-10. Jaden House is legit, and he was a great pickup for Rhode Island. I'm not questioning that, however – I don't think he solves all of the Rams' problems from a season ago. Miller's not an offensive coach. He's more of a defensive mastermind. So I'm, once again, a little down on Rhode Island. Um, Also, can we talk – I mean, it's kind of a common theme in the A-10. None of these teams are really challenging themselves outside of conference. Um, They have a road game at Providence and at Charleston. But other than that, nothing to be desired. Yeah, what the hell is that? 
I, I don't know. If this team enters the conference play with like three or four losses, I'm not buying it. They're only going to get one bid this year. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Yeah. I'm right there with yep. you. And yeah. I think it's Dayton. <laughs> yeah. Not bold. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, let's jump over and talk about the Richmond Spiders. All right. Yeah. Uh, Chris Mooney. Hope he's healthy and back from Chipotle that. I gang. He, I know he had a, uh, a, uh, something with his heart this off season or towards the end mm-hmm. of the season wishing coach Mooney the best he's in his 19th season obviously last year didn't go the way you wanted it from his health point of view and also 15 and 18 7 and 11 in conference remember the year before they went to the ncaa tournament they knocked off i believe it was iowa in the opening round of the ncaa tournament uh the bad news is tyler burton who was their best player is gone 19 points a game seven and a half boards he goes to, where did he go? Villanova, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, Matt Grace, gone. Jason Nelson, gone. Andre Gustavuson, gone. All key contributors. Now, uh, they do return. And this is a guy that I feel like normally brings these guys up through the Spider program. So they do have a couple guys that got solid minutes, like center Neil Quinn, uh, seven-foot center. Played about 23 minutes a game a season ago. Isaiah Bigelow at the forward spot, 22 minutes a season ago. Jason Roach, uh, 18 minutes a season ago. Those guys are all going to be projected to be starting this year. Um, and they they went out in the portal, and they brought in Delani Hunt from Wagner, the vacuum company. They got uh, they got uh, over 11 points per game, or I'm sorry, Hunt ha- averaged over 11 points a game at Wagner. Uh, this was the big one to me, Jordan King from East Tennessee State. If you watch SoCon basketball, he brought in two guys that I like, Jordan King from the Buccaneers and also Tyler Harris from Western Carolina. I know Weehawk, shout out to Weehawk in the, in the chat. Yeah, I know he's pissed about that because he is a Catamounts fan, and Tyler Harris was a solid player for them uh, a year ago. Besides that, though, they, they bring back Aiden Noyes. They bring back uh, Bailey and, and Walls, but – I kind of think this is a down year for Richmond as Mooney enters year 19. I know he's a good coach, so I don't think they'll be terrible, but I definitely don't think they're going to be good. Mac, your thoughts. Yeah. Mooney Mooney's been really good there in, in his 19th year at Richmond. I remember uh, back in about 2018 and 19, he had some ridiculous jackasses down here that were putting billboards to fire Mooney. Yeah. Yeah. What does he do? He turns that thing right around. They knock off Iowa, like you said, in the tournament. Another good culture uh, play here. I mean, I think they're kind of in the middle of the pack despite not being one of their better teams. But I don't think that they're going to fall to what they were when they were building those billboards because what people didn't realize, they had all freshmen on that team. They don't have all freshmen. So this is a hard team to prepare for with that Princeton offense. He'll find a way to keep it around 500 like he always does. Yeah. Yeah, Noah, your thoughts on the Spiders. Can they crawl their way out of the cellar? See what I did there? What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, th- I think they can. You have to like that four of the five projected starters are seniors here. All five of them averaged more than 17 minutes a game last season. Granted, Delani Hunt and Jordan King are taking big steps up in conferences. But after losing Tyler Burton, uh, the the roster as, as a whole doesn't jump off the page. But I'm with you guys and believing that it's hard for them to be worse than they were last season. Yeah. Yeah. I just think, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, he's a proven coach. He's overachieved before. Maybe we eat shit on this play, but uh, let's talk about St. Joe's because you're talking about a team that fired a proven coach, Phil Martelli, to bring in uh, Billy Lang. And Billy Lang has had some issues winning winning ball games there. Big year for him. He's in year five. They've been ass each and every year. Occasionally, they show signs of life. I know this team is talented from a roster standpoint. But I think it's a gigantic year for him because they 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 kind of have their core intact. All they they lost Obina, uh, who averaged what like eight and a half points a game from a season ago. They weren't really active in the portal. Didn't go for anybody. Um, but they returned a ton of production from a year ago. Lynn Greer back at the the guard spot. Him and Eric Reynolds back. They combined for about thirty points a game, uh, thirty two points a game a season ago. Cam Brown's back at the other guard spot. Uh, fifth year senior. Um, and then uh, Casper, uh, oh man, classic, classic. Um, they're big man. He's back and they're bringing in a, uh, a redshirt freshman that's supposed to be solid at the center spot. They also have a couple reserves that are, that are solid. Charles Coleman, 
uh, got about 10 minutes a game a year ago. And same with Rashir Fleming. Uh, I just don't really trust the coach to tell you the truth. Like, I think this team, if you gave this team to another coach in the conference, mm-hmm. I think they would be a top five school. I don't trust the coach. And that is why I, uh, I have them towards the back St. Joe's, uh, Mac, your thoughts on St. Joe's. Yeah. R- roster wise, very talented. Uh, one of the best backcourts in this league. Um, but I- I'm a skeptic of Lang as well. I mean, he hasn't had a winning season at St. Joe's in four years after Martelli had that thing going for 20 plus, I, I think they're going to be, uh, I think they'll be solid, but from expectation, expectation standpoint, I'll look to fade this team as an underachieving team potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Noah, your thoughts on uh, the, the Hawks. Yeah. So 18 and four, 18 and 48 in conference play during Billy Lang's tenure here, they've improved their eight ten record every single year. They were two and 16, Year one, eight and ten last year. After losing only one player from last year's squad, I think this team's poised for another step up. I think they're above five hundred team. I don't know what their ceiling is going to be. I would probably put them either seventh or eighth in the A ten. I think they're right in the middle. Um, so I think the backcourt's talented, but the rest is, remains to be seen. Especially when it gets to crunch time here, and they're trying to. Uh, win some games in the last five minutes and we're questioning coaching here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's my, maybe it's my hatred for them firing Phil Martelli. who's a fucking great coach. Hey, I don't have any hatred. He's on our staff right now at Michigan. So <laughs> there you go. Isn't he the interim head coach right now? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah he's, he's the acting head coach while Howard re- recovers. Uh, let's talk about the St. Louis Billikens, another team that, you know, they're like a better version of St. Joe's to me. They have talent, yes. but I, I can never trust this team to win big games. Um, Travis Ford is back, former Kentucky Wildcat. I remember watching them back in the day. They were 21 and 12, 12 and 6 in conference season ago. They were super talented, but guess what? Yuri Collins gone. Javante Perkins gone. Javon Pickett gone. Uh, Okoro, Francis Okoro gone. Jake Forrester gone. Fred Thatch gone. They lose a lot of guys on a super talented team a year ago, a team that probably should have been an NCAA tournament team based on roster. They brought in, though, in the portal. First off, they returned Gibson Jimerson. Remember, he was out for the – he got out for the season last year. That is a nice break for them. Um, They go out in the portal, though, and bring in Michael Meadows. And I, I watched a lot of the Portland Pilots over here, uh, you know, because I get the WCC in the, the late night games. Where the hell is my pilot drop? Anyway, um, I don't know where it is. Um, but uh, here, I'll say this. You all-American son of a th- Itch. That that's because he's really good. All right, Michael Meadows is 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 a good player. I, I I think that's a nice get for them. I think their backcourt with Meadows and Jimerson is very good. Uh, they also went out and got Tim Dolger or Dolger from uh, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. He averaged double digits with the Golden Hurricane there a season ago. They also brought in Bruce Zhang from the Skill Factory. What the fuck is that? Love it. <laughs> All right. It's a new movie. Check it out, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, Bruce Zhang coming in there. Uh, also, Sion Medley is a freshman from, from Camden. They also added a Georgetown transfer, Bradley, uh, as a wire. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce these names. All right, but look. Um, yeah, there's a lot of youth on the bench. They also have Larry Hughes Jr. back. Yeah, that Larry Hughes. Um, they have Kellen Thomas back as well as Sincere Parker. Those guys are, all will get more minutes uh yeah i think from a talent perspective you got to have them in the top five give me st louis the billikens as a top five maybe you can talk me into like sixth actually looking at my rankings now uh yeah no i had them at fifth so i got the billikens still i think they're probably more talented than almost every team in the league um short of a couple teams and but i'm sure they'll find ways to lose games to like uh, a bunch of teams that they shouldn't lose to. Uh, Mac, your thoughts on the Billikens? Yeah, don't, don't bet on this team. This like Travis Ford, he did this at Oklahoma State when his teams were loaded. He would finish in that three to five range, but then if he doesn't have the best roster, then he starts teetering towards the back half of the league. 
I think they're going to take a step back this year. I, I, I think the Billikens, I don't think they're as talented as they've been. Still talented, but I just can't get behind Travis Ford. Um, like you said, always underachieving. So I'll fade the Billikens this year. Noah, you high on yeah. the Billikens? I think I listened to you guys last year say the same things about Travis Ford, yet I ignored it. I backed this team hard. I was high on them last year. I thought they were winning the conference. Um, it was probably top two, top three most talented roster in the A-10. Total disappointment. The year I pictured didn't come to fruition. Now the Billikens, they lose a boatload of stars and scoring, and I think it's a prove-it year for Travis Ford. Um, we've mentioned that Jimerson's going to have to carry a lot of the weight here in specific St. Louis is going to need Meadows and some Tim Dalger to fit and contribute right away. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm right there kind of with you doubt and forward here. I think it's another middle of the road, a 10 team. Yep. Uh, and let's jump on over and take it to Bonaventure, New York, where the Bonnie start your football program, St. Bonaventure, um, bring it back. Actually, should I say, bring it fucking back. I think Ted March Broda played with the bonnies back in the day um mark schmidt enters year 17 he's fucking phenomenal he's a phenomenal coach in my opinion he's underrated um the, yes they were 14 and 18 in last year the year before they made the ncaa tournament i think he's a very good coach and i think uh they had growing pains they were young uh, a year ago they didn't they lose a couple guys but they weren't substantial players i think they combined for you know just under four points a game or something like that four and a half points a game um but uh, they went out, and one of the best gets, I thought, out of the whole A-10 portal gets was Charles Pride coming in from Bryant with the Bulldogs there. Pride averaged just about 15 points a game with the Bryant Bulldogs. They also bring in Micah Adams Woods, uh, a grad transfer who averaged nine point, over, a little over nine points a game with the Cincinnati Bearcats. And they also bring in Noel Brown uh, deep on that bench uh, as a big man from G-Dub. From the Colonials of George Washington, um, but then uh, they, you know, they returned. Remember, Daryl Banks was part of that St. Peter's run to the Elite Eight. Uh, Kyrell Luke is back, and to me, those guards with pride. Oh, that's a really good guard combo. Uh, they also have Yan F- uh, Farrell, the six-six forward who averaged about nine points a game from a season ago, and same with Chad Venning, their big man. I think this team. I think this team could be the surprise team in this whole conference. I I do have them finishing in the top five, but I wouldn't be shocked if they won the fucking conference. Uh, Mac, talk to me about the Bonnies. Yeah, they went through the growing pains last year in their prime for run this year. Uh, everything we just said about St. Louis from a culture coaching standpoint, complete opposite. St. Yeah. Bonaventure is under Mark Schmidt, always overachieves. Um, I thought they were hot last year, late in the year. They got better and better, took their growing pains, I'm right there. I may end up picking them to win the league. I love the Bonnies this year to challenge the Dayton Flyers for the A-10. Yeah. Uh, Noah, your thoughts up there in Bonaventure, New York. I absolutely love this roster. I'm not going to really repeat anything that you guys said. Best trio of guards in the A-10. I, I think this is a, a, at their very ceiling. I think they win the A-10. However, I, I have them in the top three. Yeah. Um, okay. Um final team to talk about is the vcu virginia commonwealth the rams whoa whoa almost played the wrong clip uh bit of a bit of a mystery hire to me now do i do i believe that vcu will still win games probably yes it's just they're going to be a lot different than the VCU we've known for 20 fucking years, maybe even 25 years uh, since Jeff Capel was their first coach. Uh, I remember like what, mid late nineties, early two thousands, maybe, maybe even before that for a long time, VCU's had the same identity. I feel like for like 25 yeah. years, they've had the same identity. Well, now they're bringing in Ryan, Ryan Odom, son of legendary Wake Forest head coach, Dave Odom. Uh, they lose everybody. So Mike Rhodes is off to Penn State. And they lose Ace Baldwin to Penn State, I believe. Brandon Johns, the former Michigan transfer. Jalen uh, Deloach, Jameer Watkins, Jaden Nunn, David Shriver. All gone. All gone. 
Now, the only thing Odom did bring with him is Louie from Logan, Utah. All right. Max uh, Shulga. Shulga. Uh, or, uh, I'm sorry. And Sean Bearstow. So you're bringing a couple guys there. You're also bringing Jason Nelson. For, for, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he passed my house on the way from Richmond to VCU. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is this about? <laughs> Jason Nelson transfers in from the Richmond Spiders. <laughs> the hell's going on? I'm telling you. Uh, Roosevelt Wheeler transfers in from the Louisville Cardinals and Kiwani, uh, Kiwani from the California very golden bears. Um, look, they return Zeb Jackson. They return a couple other guys, Christian Furman, um, Toby Lowell, Fats Billups, the third great name. This is going to be an, complete identity shift though and that's why i expect extreme regression in year one maybe it works out long term but vcu i think is gonna have a tough year mac your thoughts on your boys uh yeah so everybody all my boys are uh vcu fans and they're they're excited they're ready to see some offense is what they're talking about and i'm i'm cautiously telling them careful what you wish for when you get away from your identity of being a hard-nosed defensive team it takes at least a year. I think this is the bottom half of the A-10 team. Despite the culture and history of this program, they have still one of the best home atmospheres. But, man, I'm not getting behind Ryan Odom in, in first year, it, trying to instill his way, his culture. He took over for Craig Smith at Utah State. Similar things happened. They went 8-10 and 10 in the uh, Mountain West that year. Then he got going in year number two. I think it's a similar situation here. I'm fading uh, the locals here at uh, Ramit. Yeah, yeah, you got to fade them. I think right now. Uh, speaking of fading, Kim Jong is in the chat too. Kim Jong, um, yes. Uh, Noah, I know you're high on Kim Jong, but uh, what do you make? Of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of Kim Jong in in the 2023 season? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> what, what what do you make of? The I'm excited season? that he's interested in college basketball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. He went from Dennis Rodman. And uh, Dennis Rodman, when when he met with Rodman, he's like, you got to start watching college hoops in America, man, especially the VCU Rams. Uh, What do you make of the VCU Rams, buddy? Yeah, so peeling back the curtain here, we were talking about this pre-show. I'm right there with you and thinking that it's going to be huge culture shock, but there's plenty of turnover to where it's like, who's it shocking? (laughs) Like, they're the only the only guy returning really that I think is going to have any impact on this. Is Zeb Jackson, who, like, if you know the meme where it's just a couple of soldiers and a clown in the middle of them, he can't shoot. Yeah. I don't know what he's going to do on this team. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've experienced him firsthand on Michigan. So I, you know, he brings in two Utah State Aggies with him and Max Shulga and Barristow. I don't think this is like a, a total rebuild, shock them, uh, bottom half of the A10. I think it's still a top five A10 team. It's going to be a shock to like the program. I don't. I don't think it's shocking the roster here. I think it's a really good roster, so I, I think they're a top five, eight, ten team. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Oh, gold, gold. Jeez. Well, that's it. We're at the end of it. By the way, shout out to Rob Donaldson. It says Kim Jong. Not sure if you've heard, but the George Washington Colonials uh, got they, they renamed themselves to the Revolutionaries. It's time to press the button. Amen. Let's, <laughs> just, go. Let's just go. All right. Uh, look. Okay. Now it's time for our pecking order. All right. Um. Uh, I mean, this one's pretty easy for me. And and by the way, I want to tell you, we're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy has a way to play alongside your favorite football team all season long. You can win up to 20 times the amount of money you enter in a single game by going five for five. And from now until October 4th, Underdog is matching 100% of your first deposits up to $500. Oh, did I mention they're giving 100 grand away every single Sunday? What? Yes, that's insane. They also have $2 million in prizes up for all season long contest. So, folks. Uh, watch along, make your picks, and maybe make a little extra cash over at Underdog's mobile app or website, underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up with the promo code SGPN, Underdog will double your first deposit up to $500. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code SGPN. All right, my pecking order. At number one, I do have the Dayton Flyers. Fly on. Uh, At number two, I do have the St. Bonaventure Bonnies. At number three, 
I have the Ramblers of Loyola. At number four, I have the Fordham Rams. It's time to ram it. At number five, I have St. Louis, the Billikens. At number six, I have the UMass Minutemen. At number seven, it's kind of a love play here. George Mason, the Patriots. Start your football program. At number eight, I have the Duquesne Dukes. At number nine, I have the George Washington Colonials. At number 10, I have St. Joe's. At number 11, I have the Richmond Spiders. At number 12, I have Rhode Island, the Rams. At number 13, I have Davidson. At number 14, I have the Explorers of LaSalle. Mac, fire away. Yeah, no, this Wait, one was hard. Did I, I forget one? Did I forget one? Is there 15 teams? Yeah. There's 15. Yeah. Who the hell did I forget? Who did I forget? Um, That's weird. Um, I said Richmond, right? Yes, I said LaSalle. Yes, I said Davidson. I said George Mason. Did I forget? No, I I forgot. No, I had Duquesne. I don't know what the fuck I forgot. Didn't I name? I named 14. Well, whoever's 15th, I have 15th. All right. Uh, Mac, fire away. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go through mine. Uh, I got Davidson finishing last. I know that, that might be a hot take, but uh, at 14, I got George Washington. Uh, fuck that name. George Mason at 13. At 12, I got the Minutemen. Um, at 11, I got the Richard Spiders. 10, the VCU Rams. So I got them finishing 10th now. Uh, the St. Joe's Hawks at number eight. I got the Billikens, number seven. I got the LaSalle surprise team, six. Uh, the Explorers, Duquesne, five. Fordham, Ramit, uh, four. I got the Ramblers of Loyola. I'll take the Bonnies, two, and I'll take Dayton, one. I'll take Dayton to win the regular season. Bonnies win the tournament. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's go. Noah. Noah, fire away. 15, UMass, sorry, Mac. Uh, 14, George Mason. 13, Rhode Island. 12, LaSalle. 11, George Washington. 10, Fordham. 9, Loyola, Chicago. 8, St. Joseph's. 7, Richmond. 6, St. Louis. 5, Davidson. 4, Duquesne. 3, VCU. 2, St. Bonaventure. 1, the tournament champ as well, the Dayton Flyers. Ooh, by the way, VCU is who I forgot. So I fucked that up. So VCU will be behind the Richmond Spiders at number 12. Um, so wait, who's your tournament champ? So I have the, I have Dayton winning the regular season and the tournament. And Mac, you had the Bonnies winning the tournament, right? Bonnies. Bonnies always get the magic there. I think I kind of agree with you. Give me the Bonnies to make the NCAA tournament. Dayton Sleeper gets, team? Yeah. I think they are the Bonnies, but if we're not doing that, then I would say it's Fordham. I think Fordham's going to be better than what people think. Mac, your thoughts? Uh, LaSalle, Fran Dunphy, you're number two. Let's go. It's going to make a big so jump here. My sleeper is either – are we sleeping on the on the team, Davidson, or the are we down on the program? Because I was quite higher than both of you. What do you mean? What, what's the, so the question is, do I think Can I have Davidson out? as a sleeper? Because I think they're a top five team this year. Certainly. Yeah, that's a sleeper. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. And bus team, Colby. Uh, the bus team is, let me go back to my, oh shit. Do we that? all have George Washington for this actually? They have some expectation this year. Yeah. yeah that's an auto play, system play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. I think I'll go, Saint, it, I'll go uh, St. Louis for mine. When bus it comes boy. to George Washington, Yes, they deserve to die. And I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> it's a joke, folks. Don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, you know, come on. We can take jokes these days, right? Uh, no, we can't. But um, look, uh, yeah, I think the biggest disappointment will probably be. I think G Dub. I also think VCU. Oh, St. Joe's. St. Joe's to me. Yeah. St. Joe's from a roster standpoint should be like a top three team. I have zero faith in the coaching staff. Uh, so I think they will be a disappointment yet again. Uh, Noah, your thoughts. I have a middle of the road, so I, I don't have them quite meeting expectations. Um, my, my big bus team was George Washington. 
Okay. Yeah, which we all have. And yeah. Uh, so yeah. Folks, that's our show. This is the Atlantic 10 preview. It's going to be a lot of fun. Remember when the season tips, all three of us will be here every single night of the college basketball season. There's nothing like college hoops, folks. Uh, we still got, you know, 27 other previews to do. So buckle up, people. We're just getting fucking started. All right. Subscribe to the college basketball experience. We're on Twitter. Give us a follow on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Speaking uh, of the 27, we have another one live coming right after this, right? Uh, I don't know that we're going to have enough time because oh, okay. 720 right now. And I have, we have a hard out. So I think we have Got to push it. that to tomorrow. Right. Um, but, uh, look, give Noah a follow on Twitter at Noah B seven. seven. what's the new one again? <laughs> it's Noah B 77 underscore. Okay. Yeah. You switched it, man. It fucked I, me all up. Every I switched time... it from a, a mouthful to another mouthful. You, you realize every time that I do the write up, I have to go find you on twitter to see what the <laughs> fuck your new thing is uh just do copy and paste it works great so the yeah. first one that you made all you have to do is copy it now we're good he's out there in the universe somewhere folks find him all right look ryan <laughs> also on the screen <laughs> ryan mcintyre is on twitter at uh, moneyline underscore mac i am on twitter at the colby d uh folks subscribe to us on youtube youtube.com slash the college experience like i said every single night of the season we rock along. We've been doing this shit for years. So buckle up. Uh, get the SGPN app in the App Store and Google Play Store. Check out our other feeds, the College Football Experience, the FCS College Football Experience, the College Baseball Experience with one Noah Beanick, the Big 12 Experience with Money, Line, Mac, and Company. Folks, we all come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Check it out. That, um, that Big 12 conference is coming up next year. Alphabetically. Yeah. We got the ACC first, but yeah, yeah, it's coming. This week, <laughs> this week, uh, oh, yeah. folks. Also, um, uh, look, come talk college hoops with us in the discord sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like, uh, the schedule, if we want to run down kind of what we're thinking schedule wise, we were planning to do big sky tonight, but this episode took seven hours and, uh, 15 so that, teams is tough. Don't yeah. expand your conferences, everybody. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And, uh, so that's going to be pushed along uh, Big Sky. Hopefully we can do the ACC and Big Sky tomorrow. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then, you know, we'll figure it out. But they're all coming. These conference preview Big 12s later in the week. We're going to get through it all, folks, here on the College Basketball Experience as soon as I find my outro music. But um, anyway, folks, until next time, this is the College Basketball Experience Atlantic 10 preview. You better start thinking about yours. And we are out of here. Yes, y'all. Reminiscing on campus. You know what I'm saying? We're going to take it back to Dutch Quad. All the girls grabbing fellow my SUNY heads out there. All right? Yeah. State style. Check it out. Yeah. The setting was second semester, second year, Saturday, 7 o'clock. SUNY A, I'm living on Dutch Quad. Playing live, 95, traded Charles Smith for Drexler. Pondering on who it is I'm trying to get next to. A five-digit number's passing into my head. 